If you have an LLC, S Corp or C Corp, and you've been trying to get access to business capital to either fund projects, pick up inventory, or even cover payroll, then in this video, I want to share with you a strategy that we use with our clients that ultimately allows them to scale the capital that they get. And so with that in mind, let's get right into it. So there is a strategy in the banking world, so to speak, that people use. And that strategy is known as credit stacking. And I know that I have the world's best handwriting, so I'm going to narrate this as I go. And so there's a term called credit stacking. And in its most basic form, what that means is you are going to three, possibly four different banks or credit unions, and you're applying for capital in a specific order, mainly business credit cards at a 0% interest. And then you're using the capital that you stacked up, hence where the word comes from, credit stacking. You're using the credit that you stacked up to fund your projects, your deals, and so on. But the issue with credit stacking that a lot of people run into is that it becomes difficult to scale. And the reason why it becomes difficult to scale is because you have what's known as a lending pool. And it looks something like this. And I'm going to put right here LP so that you know what this is. This is lending pool, right? So inside of this lending pool, you'll have one bank. You have another credit union, another bank, another credit union, another bank, another bank, another bank. Kind of looks like a moon, kind of looks like a pizza, depending on how you're looking at it and what day it is, right? And so this lending pool, what most people do is they say, okay, if I apply and I'm doing, let's say, a credit stacking sequence, and I apply at bank A, and I get access to, let's say, we'll take it linearly, so we'll just do 20K, bank B, and that's another 20K, and then we have bank C, and that's another 20K. We now have a grand total, and again, we're working for you're working with common figures here to not, you know, overdraw this example. We have essentially access to 60k in credit lines, all things considered equal. But this is a linear process, and so it doesn't always shape out like this. And so, what ends up happening when you have a lending pool is Bank A, Bank B, and Bank C. As you can see here, they're all inside of the same, this, these are arrows, they're all inside of the same lending pool. And now what ends up happening is that since you fall in line of the same lending pool, meaning you are going to the same overseer or the financial institution that's overseeing the credit approvals, you fall within, that should be a, a, uh, a U, W, which stands for underwriting. This means that there is going to be a cap to the amount of capital that you can get at each bank. So let's say that the cap is one business credit card, or let's say, you know, we'll do one to two business credit cards per financial institution. And so what ends up happening is some people say, okay, well, that works fine, Irv, because I have, let's say, one here, I have one here, one here and one here. But remember, the issue is, is that it's all inside of the same lending pool. And so the one, two product lines cap out. That means that you really only get access to one bank. And if you're asking, why is that? Well, banks have what's known as a total lending I'm probably going to run out of space. So this is going to be exposure, right? That EXP dot total lending exposure. And each bank has their own threshold for how much they approve, not just per borrower, meaning you, the business owner, if you're personally guaranteeing it, or if it's more than one business owner, let's say per, uh, let's say per owner on the entity, if it's 50, 50, each of you are going to have a cap that can be anywhere between 50 to a hundred. So there's a total lending exposure on the owner side, but there's also a total lending exposure on the business entity side. And for bigger banks like Chase, 
it's you know Chase, Bank of America, sometimes credit unions, depending on where you're going, if they're a bigger branch or a bigger brand, it's usually right around a 250k threshold. Now, this isn't set in stone. The 250k is not set in stone. This is just a common figure that we tend to see. Now, if you're wondering what happens after 250k, well one of three things typically happens. Number one is they're typically going to ask you for more financial documents, but if you are a seasoned business owner where you have your P&Ls ready to go, you have your FPS or you know your, your PFS, your personal financial statements ready to go, or if you have your tax returns, then that's not an issue. But if you're watching this video and if maybe you're looking at a credit second method, that may be an issue because maybe you, you haven't been turning a profit just yet, or maybe you just formed your LLC. That's typically the first thing that they look for. The second thing that they'll, that they'll typically look for is they'll lower the amount on previous approvals. So you'll probably get your credit limits slash on previous products in exchange that you have a higher limit on a future credit approval. And then the third thing that can typically happen, if it's not a combination of, of all three, is just you just flat out get denied. So what do we do with all of this? Like, Irv, if I am, let's say, just looking to get access to business capital, but I know that I want to hit three different banks, and I know that maybe I have a financial relationship with Wells Fargo. I have a financial relationship with Bank of America. I have a financial relationship with, let's say, Chase. In that sense, that wouldn't fall in line of the same lending pool. So this is the caveat that I want you to note right here. If you are setting up your own round of funding, which is something that we customize with our clients when we're working closely with them, is we pay attention to the network and we ensure that we're not hitting the same network multiple times within a specific period. And so if I know, hey, with let's say Chase, we're maybe only going to get access to two credit lines given this business's situation, then let's only, let's say, grab access to one business on the credit product and one, let's say business credit card, and then let's move into the next financial institution. But what a lot of people end up doing is they fall for this trap where they think that just because they are looking at a community bank or a local credit union, they're applying at a different financial institution. And so they're hitting the same bank. What they're hitting is the same network. And so here are a couple of networks that you're most likely hitting. You have Elon Financial. So I just put on there Elon Fin, which is Elon Financial. You have TCM, which is Total Credit Management. You have HTLF, which is another network that you're probably hitting. And then you have FNBO, which is a fourth network that you're most likely hitting. Now, there's a couple more networks, but these are really the main ones that you want to pay attention to. Because here's what I know to be true. If I'm setting up a funding framework and I go to, and I'll give you just two examples off the top of my head. I go to, let's say, Seacoast Bank. And then I go to, who's another one around here? Let's say I go to Cinevis. Then I know that these two right here, Cinevis, and who was the other one that I said? And Seacoast all fall in line with Elon Financial, which means I'm going to be limited to right around two, maybe three products at most per entity. And again, this is all going to be based on where the business is at geographically, how long they've been around, what the actual industry is. So I'm just giving you basic metrics, right? That you can make your decisions based off of. So then what do I do with all of this? What are some action items that I can take home, take to the bank, right? So here are some action steps that I would consider you to take a look at. Number one is look at the network. You want to look at the network and you want to make sure that each of the financial institutions that you're maybe looking to get access to are, are or have their own underwriting guidelines, which means they have their own underwriting criteria. And so what that's going to mean for you is that it's going to fall outside of the same data base. And so that way, it doesn't look like you're fishing for credit or desperate for credit because you're not overextending yourself. So we have network, which lands with, it lands outside of the same database. And then our final point is you want to pay attention to the timing of the credit applications. Because if you're applying 
for way too many products too quickly inside of the same funding pool, then after typically that second line, you're going to run into a denial or that's where you see the weak low limits coming at you. Who the heck wants that? Who's going to scale their business with less than 40, 50 K per credit approval anyways, right? At that point, you might as well wait to season the accounts. At that point, you might as well wait and not even pull the trigger on any of these credit applications and actually put a funding sequence in place that makes sense for your business. And so if you find yourself where, hey, I'm starting to notice that either A, I'm getting lower limit approvals, B, I'm running into denials, or C, I'm getting those pesky, hey, we'll get back to you, but keep your account open with us. And maybe in the future, we'll, we'll, take, a, we'll take another look at your file. Take a look at this piece right here that I just finished breaking down. Is it the same network? Am I fishing inside or am I landing inside of the same database, which looks like I'm credit fishing, right? It looks like you're desperate. You're applying for too many things too fast inside of the same network. And then lastly, the timing. And this goes beyond just the hard inquiries, which a lot of people tend to say, well, you know, I could probably just wipe out the hard inquiries. There's timestamps when somebody's applying for capital inside of each of these lending institutions. And so it goes beyond just wiping a hard inquiry and thinking that that alone is going to erase the, the essentially the digital footprint that a business leads inside of a credit union inside of a bank. If you found this video helpful and if you want our team to take a look at your business, where it's at, see if it needs to be restructured, repositioned, we do full audits on businesses and we help them get access to capital in a sustainable way, in a predictable way, in a holistic way where it doesn't break the business and ultimately it sets them up for future funding rounds. If that sounds at all interesting to you, you can go ahead and click the link below, insightindustrial.com, book a call with our team, and we'll see where you're at and see how we can help. But other than that, I appreciate you guys checking me out. Until next time, everyone, I will see you in the next video. Bye.